Hi, I'm Greg Estes, and I'm going to take you on a tour, but this is going to be unlike any other tour of the Galapagos. Over the past 30 years, I have explored the Galapagos Islands, and you're going to see what I have seen both on land and underwater through my video and my photos. On this first episode, I'm going to do a general overview of the Galapagos, and then we're going to take a close look at that Galapagos marine iguana. So let's get started. Charles Darwin called the Galapagos that land of craters, but before there were craters, there was nothing but ocean. And then the sea floor began to erupt. Steam billowed as the hot magma reached the sea surface. Gradually, as the layers of liquid lava cooled, the islands formed. They started off barren, devoid of life. But over time, organisms arrived and established in the lava flows, like this lava cactus. It wasn't long before these craters became cloaked with vegetation. And then, crossing that vast expanse of ocean, came animals, like the ancestor of the Galapagos land iguana. Upon arrival, they looked for food. A good source is the Opuntia prickly pear cactus. Reaching those nutritious cactus pads and fruits can be a challenge. but perseverance eventually pays off. Birds which reach the islands were also able to feed on the plants, like the ancestor of this Darwin's finch. And by feeding on the flowers, insects like this carpenter bee helped to pollinate them. Birds lending color to the landscape include the vermilion flycatcher. This American flamingo is considered the most isolated population of flamingo in the world. Higher up the food chain, the short-eared owls spread through the archipelago. Making it to the Galapagos was easier for this ocean traveler, the waved albatross. Marine mammals also found their way to the islands. These sea lions settled in the Galapagos due to the abundance of fish. Schools of sergeant majors, creole fish, and these black striped salimas are common in the islands. Boobies feed on the fish by diving. These blue-footed boobies have an elaborate courtship display. They dance and sky point to attract a mate. The male frigate bird displays its inflated red pouch to attract a female. Both parents take turns rearing the chick. One of the more bizarre arrivals in the Galapagos is the penguin. The islands have the coldest water on the equator due to cool nutrient-rich currents. This enabled the ancestors of the Galapagos penguin to reach this far north. 
The islands are named for this iconic animal, the giant tortoise, or Galapagos as it is called in Spanish. The Galapagos Islands is the only place in the world where you find a seagoing lizard. It is thought the ancestors of these iguanas arrived as land iguanas and then evolved to feed in the ocean. The iguana uses its long bilaterally compressed tail to propel itself through the water. The males dive down to feed on the algal beds. They rasp the algae off the rocks with their tricuspid teeth. Well-developed claws enable them to grip onto the rocks while they feed. Wrasses, like this colorful Cortez rainbow wrass, take advantage of any food dislodged by the marine iguana. On more sparsely vegetated rocks, territorial damselfish attack the iguanas. Pacific green turtles can often be seen feeding together with the marine iguanas. Once the iguanas are ready to surface, that is when they are the most vulnerable. Sea lions like to chase them. Eventually, when the iguana makes it to shore, the younger sea lions are ready for some fun. Speeding up the video reveals how the iguanas make their way up the beach. Once above the high tide line, the iguanas heat their bodies up while digesting their food. During this time, they also process the seawater which they have ingested, spurting the hypersaline water out of their nostrils. Little lava lizards like to perch on the iguanas. What is the collective noun for a group of iguanas? It's a mess. I hope you enjoyed this first episode of Greg's Galapagos. Stay tuned for more episodes when we continue to explore this land of craters and see more bizarre behavior of the amazing wildlife. Don't forget to subscribe to Greg's Galapagos and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Until next time, this is Greg Estes.